Hey ladies uh, and gents, if you're watching this and you're a gent, uh, my name is Marnie Batista. And what I'm here to tell you today is the 11 key habits that I use and I think you want to use to completely reinvent your life starting today. Now, I come at this from some pretty extensive uh, experience. 14 years ago, when I think back as I created this list, I was $100,000 plus in debt. Um, I was a broke nursery school teacher. I was single. I was crying over a guy who absolutely didn't love me the same way I loved him. I had these three young children. The youngest was two, the oldest was eight. Um, and I knew my uh, alimony was gonna run out, right? And that alimony was barely enough to keep me going. And I use these 11 habits single-handedly to completely reinvent my life so that if you flash forward 14 years later, not only was I able to create an amazing and healthy romantic relationship and, and marry my husband and have a blended family where we're able to raise these daughters who turned out to be amazing, empowered, emotionally intelligent young women, um, to create a business that I absolutely was able to generate not only enough money to pay off debt, but to create actual wealth. I was able to... 100% with no experience, um, able to create the impact and be mission driven in that business so that I was able to touch and reach thousands of women over the last decade plus whose lives have been transformed to create a ripple effect that I believe has made the bet the world a better place, right? Um, and all of that, while I didn't have to sell my soul, I didn't have to blow up my life, uh, I was able to have time to enjoy my life, to travel, to create incredible experiences with my family. And when I think about if my parents who both passed away uh, five, 10 years ago, if they were to look at my life now, right? From when they left this planet, they, they wouldn't recognize it, right? It's a complete reinvention. And I want you to know that that is possible. And the reason why this is so important for you to understand is that the version of you that has these big dreams, that is dissatisfied now, that has a longing, that version of you is inside of you. And the way that you breathe life into it, that you ignite that fire within, that you create momentum of the new identity that is that person inside of you, and then create energy and momentum to create a future timeline in which all your dreams come true starts by taking action one day at a time, beginning today. So this is about believing in yourself and knowing that you wouldn't have the dream if it weren't possible. And then that you must stop putting it off or waiting for circumstance to change and start taking action one day at a time, beginning today. So let's roll through uh, these, um, these habits. So number one is you have to be discerning about who you are taking advice from. What happens is that our brains are meaning making machines and we seek information. And most often because we have a bias in which we want to seek information that we believe supports what we think we need or know, we will shop around to hear what we want to hear. And what I will say to you is that you have to be discerning and you want to make sure that you are not taking advice from random people on TikTok, uh, from some person that you're following on Instagram. You want to ideally be very discerning about who it is that you're taking advice from and limit that to no more than three trusted sources that you really believe have the ability to guide you because, and that leads to the next step, which is you believe because they have done it before. And that goes to my second sort of tip. And that is that you want to make sure that you find a mentor and a coach, ideally someone who can do both 
not only just ask you empowering questions, but actually is doing what you want to do and is surrounded by people who either already have accomplished it or are on that path with you. And that you can look to that mentor and see not only that they've accomplished it, but they walk the talk and hold the values that you hold along the way to get there, right? And you want to be able to look at that person and know by the way that they live their life and the way that their values show up, that it's a total match for you. And then you want to be in that community because what it has been said that the five people that you are with now might be a reflection of the life you have. You want to shift into creating a tribe of women or people or men that really have the same goals and values and that want exactly what you want. Okay, let's go here to um, number three. So let's see, number three. Okay, you want to forget about normal. Um, so here's the thing. Comparison despair is a real thing, right? And so what we want to do is we want to stop looking at what everyone else has done to be successful because chances are it may not work for you. And let me tell you, uh, this was a big problem for me. Um, over over those times until I really figured out that the most important thing that I could do was figure out what was inside of me, what was my essential self to listen and know what made me unique and then be unabashedly me a hundred percent, even to where I'm like, you know, still in my pajamas, no makeup on ever when I do videos, right? I'm real, I'm raw. And I stopped looking to be what I thought others needed me to be or to try and mimic or copy other people that had success. Um, you have your own set of what, what some people call unfair advantages, right? Your own things that make you incredibly you, you want to use them. You want to leverage what makes you unique and you want to put that out in the world, whether it's in your business, in your career, in your relationship, whatever it is, stop comparing yourself to other people. Okay. Let's talk about number four. And number four is uh, what I call the 80-20 rule. And what I mean by that is that you really want to focus on what is it that you are consuming, right? Um, that means like less courses, less, le less masterminds, less training, less books, less podcasts. You want to really turn off all of those things that are distractions to you. And you want to focus on the 20% that actually are essential for you right now to help you move forward towards the goal and the vision of what it is that you're dreaming about, right? You want to focus on that part of you that is unique. You want to put your attention uh, on the stuff that really matters. And you want to be focused on executing and implementing whatever it is. So turn off all the crap because it just takes your mind in a massive direction around comparison, despair, confusion, overwhelm, and get super, super focused. Okay, the next one. I love this one because it's so, so powerful. And that's around this idea of imposter syndrome. Um, you got to forget that you're likely an imposter. Uh, here's the thing. Everyone is to some extent, right? Um, you don't need to be um, an expert or a guru or the best. Um, because the truth is, whether you're talking about your business or as a parent or in your career, um, the truth is that no one has it figured out. Um, the if you are so focused on your insecurities and that you aren't worthy or that you don't know enough, um, it will 100% always stop you in your tracks from creating what it is that you want to create in your life. Um, you have to remember that you are valuable, that you are unique. Um, and the bottom line is you wouldn't be following this dream of what it is you want to create in your next chapter of your life um, if you really were an imposter. Because there's something inside of you just by being here that you're owning. So, so believe in your value, own that at the level of your most deep knowing, and then execute. Okay, let's talk about number six. Uh, and this is huge. This is around leveraging. And uh, this is a mistake that people make all the time um, for so many 
reasons. They believe that it takes too much time to teach someone how to do something. They believe they don't have the resources to do that. And often they are actually hiding in being buried or being overly busy or not being willing to delegate or trust other people or asking for help. There's a lot of unconscious reasons why we don't leverage. The bottom line is you have to leverage yourself as soon as possible, whether it's in your business or in your team or in your personal life um, or all those areas. I remember when I first started my business, um, I hired my the brother of my babysitter who was still in high school to help me set up my YouTube channel. <laughs> right? I was like, I don't know how to do this. I think I paid him like 10 bucks, right? Um, so that means as soon as you can, as soon as you understand this, you want to start looking at what can I delegate? And you look at that by what is absolutely 100% non-service delivery oriented, meaning what I mean, make that mean is it is something that only you can do right? Only you can do. For me, I was like, well, only I can like play with my kids or spend time with my kids. So I can get someone to help me do something like set up that YouTube channel, then I'm going to do it, right? Whether it's operations, finance, um, any tasks, um, either you're afraid or you're making up a story and there's always a way. So the bottom line is you can't be good at everything. The grinding and the hustle that maybe got you where you are in certain parts of your life and your job and your career, that's not going to take you to the next level. And so you have to have to 100% learn how to leverage. Okay. So next one. You have to schedule yourself. I just did a video on this and I will put this video uh, uh, nearby about how to how to manage your time by using my my time hacks. But what I want you to understand is this. Um, when you want to reinvent yourself, being productive um, is important. And I mean, even productive in how you spend your downtime, right? Everything needs to be scheduled. Um, you have to be obsessed about this. Um, Everyone that you talk to that gets a lot done, um, but also has uh, the ability to enjoy their life and live a full, meaningful life is really, really protective about how they use their time. Um, the bottom line is if you have stories that you can't or that life is too messy or that you want to be spontaneous, I really encourage you to rethink that because time is precious. Um, it's about how you manage your mind and your relationship to time and what you do with your time that will create that new life that you want for yourself. And again, I have another video. We'll, we'll post that somewhere about our five second hack, but it's really important that you learn how to schedule and protect and block your time, making sure that the things that you want to focus on that 20% are how you're actually using your time. And again, including your, your fun time and your downtime. All right. Number eight. Uh, this is a big one. Uh, stop looking for the answer. Uh, forget trying to answer, you know, what is my mission? What is my purpose? What does my next chapter look like? Where do I want to live? Uh, what can my business look like? How much should I charge? Um, how can I get up the corporate ladder? Uh, what's the, what's the, what's the answer? Um, the bottom line is we use that searching for the answer as a block. Um, because it keeps you safe. It keeps you actually from doing the work that it is that you need to do. Um, when you start focusing on what are those answers, um, especially in the early days of your reinvention, it will take you a hundred percent backward. Um, why? Uh, because first of all, you're really far from being able to achieve it. Uh, you don't have the information that will help guide your decision that comes from the feedback of early action, which leads me to this truth, that action precedes clarity, right? That means that you have to take intentional action to start unpacking and unwinding the answers to those bigger questions. And if you add those actions up over 30, 60, 90 days a year, right? You start to get the information that helps you to unwind the answer to those bigger questions. It can never happen just between your ears by overthinking it. Um, you will 
understand that once you start to get into action and create momentum of this action, it changes your identity, the opportunities that you attract to you, the information, the, the, the mirror that, that gets held up when you're in action actually helps expand your horizon and actually identify the pieces of your plan. Um, if you keep asking those questions, you're never, never, never going to be able to fulfill your mission and your dream to live this new, more fulfilling, exciting life for yourself. Okay, next one. One other thing I want to add on this, because I think it's important about seeking wisdom and having structure. All of those things that happen in those day-to-day -day breakdown of the bigger question come from not just guessing, but actually having a structured plan about how to unpack and unwind the answers to those questions. So you can't just sit there and wait for the answer to come. You want to be very efficient in your plan of action of how you unpack that over those 30, 60, 90 days. Okay. Focus on the 1% because it counts. Um, here's the thing. There is this uh, uh, guy named Scott Oliford that I heard him say um, that your life develops 1% a day in the direction of your dream if you so choose, right? Um, you have to look at what it is that you want to accomplish. And then at the end of the day, take account and be responsible for who you are. Like if it's 1% different, if you learned one thing, if you did one uncomfortable thing, if you made any of these habits part of your life, and you ask yourself, am I more of who I am? Have I improved? Have I grown? Have I learned? Is this day created that for me? Am I more of who I am than when I woke up this morning? Keep going. Don't focus on the big task. It's the small 1% that you do every day that ultimately leads to the complete reinvention and transformation of your life. Um, bottom line is if you're doing that, that's great. If you feel like, no, actually I'm not, you know, seven days in a row and you haven't done that, no problem. You want to assess where did I go wrong? What's working? What's not working? You want to look at your routines and your habits and you just make adjustments and you realign and you get back into action. So you can be resourceful internally and you can be resilient. And that's a really, really important piece is learning how to do that. Um, okay. Let's keep going, uh, which leads to my next point about learning how to resource so you can fail and try again. This is a really, really important. Um, you have to not be afraid to fail when you are reinventing your life, right? Um, I wrote in my book, if you are attempting at any given time to just be more of who you are, you're being uncomfortable, you're putting yourself out there, you're trying something new and you fail. Um, you didn't fail because you're trying to be more of who you are. You're putting yourself into action. You're getting feedback. You are learning. You're growing. Um, just because it didn't work doesn't mean that it can't or it won't work. And so it just means that that specific thing didn't work in that moment, right? So you have to iterate, you have to innovate, and you have to expect that it's probably not going to work out exactly the way you want it. However, now you know one more way that it doesn't work. And you have to never give up on that, right? On that innovation, on that iteration. Um, every time you do something, right, you learn and you grow. And the way that you're able to fall down and stand up is to understand that if you are resourcing your capability, your enoughness, your belief in yourself externally, right, from your performance on any given task or any given day, and you don't create what you want, right? Or you get what you don't want, you will fall down and not be able to stand back up for a really long time. So what you have to do is you have to learn to resource your capability, your belief in your enoughness, your vision internally, and then be able to attack that when you need it, right? To be able to resource, to resource internally as if you had a never ending lifelong battery inside of you that whenever you felt frustrated, you tapped in and that reignited the spark and you knew and you believed and you got back up. The fastest way to reinvention and transformation is to be able to do that consistently so that you can move through that change and transformation into the life that you want and enjoy the journey along the way, which is really what makes it meaningful in the first place. 
All right. So here we go. Last one. Focus on the four and be relentless about it. So I was really thinking about this and I was like, okay, what are the, if I were going to say there's four key investments of my time and I'm going to spend that really important uh, time, right? 80% on those things that really, really matter. Um, here's what they are. Number one would be knowledge, right? Like knowledge and really being able to learn and grow and ask these right questions and be able to implement, not to overthink, but to seek knowledge and information so that you have what you need to implement and execute. So when I was reinventing my life, whether it was around my money or my business or parenting or relationship, I was constantly learning so that I could grow into the best version of myself. Remember, when I was realizing that I had limited thinking around abundance and making money, and I spent months just learning, what do I need to learn to install a new point of view to get that information, but also to really unpack and unwind all of the limiting beliefs I had around abundance and believe in myself that I was a money making machine, money be, money be right? Uh, for good, right? So not just for myself, so that I could impact the people I love and all others, right? And be able to, to be a philanthropist. And as a result of all that, we as our company donated over half a million dollars to uh, an organization over the last 14 years. So, so these are really important things to think about, like, how am I going to spend my day learning? Number two, health, your mental and physical well-being. You want to invest time in that at least an hour a day, whether it is moving your body, but also really being able to focus on your emotional and your spiritual well-being as well. Um, the third thing I would say is stillness. And when I think about stillness, this is about creating time in my day so that I can listen to what's happening inside of myself. I was coaching uh, a bunch of CEOs who own and operate small businesses and I and they're like, oh, I'm too busy. And I was like, well, think about it. If you had four people that worked for you um, and you were like, I'm too busy to meet with you every day, uh, would you ever do that? And they were like, no, I never would do that. So there's parts of you, your emotional self, your, your intellect, your spiritual self, your physical self, your body. There are parts of you that have messages for you. They have ideas. They have wisdom. Um, there's There's things that need tending to internally. And so if you don't take time for that stillness to have that meeting with yourself and develop that internal relationship with yourself, then you can never really do any of the things that we've talked about in these other uh, 10 steps. Um, and then finally, uh, the things that create stability for you. And I really have all my clients identify what are those touchstones? What are those practices, beliefs? What is it individually for each person that creates that that strong foundation of stability so that they can show up and execute, right? Um, whether it's reflection, meditation, knowing yourself, um, eating right, uh, having enough time to laugh, connect, uh, being with people, uh, creating something, whether it's something that you love like cooking, right? Or, or shopping or design, whatever it is, right? But knowing what are those things that create stability and then spending time in your day actually executing on them. And notice this wasn't like four hours a day of like working, right? Or four hours a day, um, actually, you know, getting shit done. So these are the four key investments of time that you want to make that will actually help you transform and reinvent your life. Um, these are the starters to really build your queendom, um, and create your reinvention, your next chapter. Uh, and of course there are more, but I wanted to keep it really simple. Um, so last thing I really want to tell you uh, before we go, and that is that that there's this. Um, look, uh, over a decade ago, I literally didn't have much. I didn't have a business. Um, I had no money of my own. When I went to coaching school, uh, I was so broke. And I actually asked my dad to help me uh, get a loan uh, and he wouldn't do it. And I had to be so resourceful to get someone to even help me pay uh, get a loan to pay for coaching school, right? I had nothing, right? Uh, I was crying over that guy who was no good for me. Um, I was over a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Uh, but slowly, right. I started to implement these pieces and because of, of that, my life has changed in 
in a tre tremendous way. It's unrecognizable. It's a total reinvention, right? And I guarantee you, you uh, you're probably smarter. You might be funnier than me, uh, more intelligent, have so many more things going on for you than I ever had. Um, but if I can figure this out to get enough momentum, to change my identity, to create a new future for myself and a new timeline and continue to do that as I evolve as a person into greater alignment so that my soul is like expressed in this world through my daily life, um, you can do it and you can probably do it faster and better than me. Um, I believe in you. You just have to take action and do it. If you'd like some help and think that I could be the right mentor for you, absolutely reach out to me. You can send an email to support at datingwithdignity.com. You can message me on Facebook Messenger with the word help uh, at Marnie Batista. Or if you're an Instagram person, you can go to Marnie Batista underscore and also DM me and say, help. I always check that folder of people I don't know. So I will find you. Uh, I look forward to more with you soon. And if you want more about how we do what we do, watch one of these videos here on YouTube. Mwah, have a great day.